going really quickly uh, back to Nier. There was a really funny comment that was linked, uh, if I can find it. Uh, but basically, it was a comment when I was playing Nier Automata for the first time. And I think it was part two. So it was the second day that I was playing it. And I went absolutely 9S on Pascal's Village uh, to unlock one of the endings. And uh, people got really, really, really upset. I've managed to find it. Here it is. <laughs> so this was like... You know, the first or second stream of me playing Nier Automata, and I just went, you know... You know, went for gold in Pascal's village, killing everything to get the ending. Um, and people, you know, took it... Took it personally, uh, and had a go at me. In hindsight... I could understand it. But... Being my first Yoko Taro game... And being Route A of my first Yoko Taro game, uh, I think I could be forgiven. Particularly since every single game up until that point, uh, particularly in the hack and slash genre or anything that has XP in the RPG genre, you are rewarded to kill everything in your way. The, w the way I play MMOs, and you saw it in my LP of Nier Automata, is that I kill everything on my way to my quest and my mission. And so in Nier Automata, I did not use any, um, any type of chips to improve my attack, to improve my defense, uh, to improve anything. I exclusively stacked XP chips. And my entire build was CPU, XP, 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 XP. <laughs> so I suffered at the beginning of the game and then I just exponentially leveled to the point that by the time we got to um, the Forest Kingdom, I was just walking as 2B with my level 1 pod firing from the pod and its DPS was so high that it was killing mobs before they could actually approach me because my level was so high relative to the mobs that we were fighting. I could AFK boss fights. That's how overleveled I was. Because I just stacked XP chips and I killed everything on my way to the mission. So that is how I played World of Warcraft. Uh, that is how I play a lot of RPGs up until that point. But I can kind of understand why some people were upset about me killing the robots in Pascal's village. I can understand it. I could see it. Um, but hey man. Your first Yoko Taro game uh, is your first Yoko Taro game. That's all I gotta say. So if you haven't actually played a Yoko Taro game, I highly recommend you play a Yoko Taro game. I highly recommend you play this Yoko Taro game before you finish the anime. And I highly recommend you play, uh, play Nier Replicant, because that is also an amazing Yoko Taro game. So, um, yeah. Ah, oh, you're here from the Overlord reactions. Damn! So many people are having so much fun... Uh, with the Overlord reactions on YouTube. Another great anime, highly recommended. Particularly if you play RPGs or MMOs, Overlord would be totally up your alley. 100%, without a doubt, would be up your alley. Alright, let's kick off some Nier Automata Episode 5. This should be fun. As always, the audio is not going to make it to YouTube because Japanese audio gets copyrighted. Uh, the audio will make it to Patreon, so either turn up to the stream on Anime Monday and watch it live, watch the VOD on Twitch, watch it without audio on YouTube, or catch it on Patreon completely uncut and uncensored. Alright, let's do this. Oh, great, we're already at this part. We've got Virgil and Dante eating a book and reading religion. I gotta ask, where the F did they get the table? No, 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 actually, that's a silly question. Where the hell did they get those candles? I love how uh, the machines are reading Genesis and assuming that's a, a literal, historically accurate 
retelling of humanity. <laughs> Step six, flood the planet. What? Take that shit out of context. Apparently the fruit wasn't an apple. I always thought it was the apple in the Garden of Eden. I must be wrong. There was like the fruit of knowledge and then the fruit of life or something. I never read Genesis. I actually never really read the Bible either. I just listened to people talking about it and got full marks at school and then got offered a scholarship at the Archdiocese to become a priest. <laughs> Which I said no to, because apparently they don't get paid very much. I was like, hell no. They made the connection to apples due to, in Latin, evil sounds almost the same as apple during medieval times. Well, the fruit could be anything, but some say it was date fruit or some grapefruit. Huh. Huh. Fair enough. I'm telling you now, I'm going to be that guy. No way this tower, this electrical tower, is going to survive a thousand years without maintenance. I'm telling you now. That steel is going to eventually just, just, it, it's not going to stay out for a thousand, I'm telling you now. Try jumping off it in the game, it's really fun. Anyone that has played Neo Automata that sees this bridge is internally screaming right now. Shouldn't you technically be carrying one in every hand so you have balance, as opposed to all your weight basically going on one side? And 9S, why are you complaining? That's a 20 liter jerry can. Literally, it's 20 liters. How dense is this liquid that you are struggling to carry a 20 liter jerry can? You disgust me. This pod has seen some shit. Oh, 
oh, we're going to be at that episode. Oh, that's going to be fun. Wait. Oh, God, no, that's not going to be fun. Well, the first time it's fun. No, wait, but this is Route B. Oh, God. Oh, this music just gives me chills down my spine. I love it so much. It's almost like returning home after years and years away. Wait till he finds a furry costume. And he's gonna be like, Why did humans want to be animals so badly? Did they hate evolution? <laughs> it would just, I would pay to see that conversation. Was he holding up a PlayStation? Possibly. Um, I think they had like a PlayStation 4 in the game itself. And they had other things as well. Uh, but there are very few games that give me this nostalgic feeling when I listen to the music. Very few. And it is absolutely shocking since I've only played this game technically once before putting it down. Given that I played two routes, you know, it kind of makes sense for this area. But there's very few games that make me feel this way when I just hear the soundtrack. So this game has definitely left a lasting impact. Like, I can visually, in my mind, go through the entire landscape of the game. That's how much of an impact it has left. So, bravo. Bravo. If you find a girl that doesn't spend all weekend at a shopping center, she's a keeper. Take a shot every time they show you 2B's butt. Oh my god, it's the French! They don't even know why they're surrendering. They're just surrendering. Wait a minute! He was just upstairs in the shopping center and now he's at the village. I mean, I get it. It's an anime, so you kind of have to, you know. But, hey! They missed, like, the most important pe person at the shopping center. I'm so disappointed. There's someone very important you meet at the shopping center. And apparently they don't meet him yet. I am so disappointed. Yes, I killed them. And not just the machine men, but the machine women and the machine children too. I slaughtered them like animals. You know what pisses me off more than anything? That 9S is holding that sword incorrectly. Let it go, Kuma. It's an anime. I would kill 9S just for that. I would literally make the entire art and animation team do sword fighting for a week for that mistake.
imagine putting this on your on your report. It's like, okay, so like we killed a bunch of machines, we secured the resistance camp, we liaisoned with Lily, and then we went to a machine village and did trade. Imagine the commander reading this. And we provided them with oil and minerals to repair and sustain themselves. The commander would just be like... <laughs> you what?! <laughs> Do conventional sword stances matter with their weapons when they can teleport and throw them? It's not the point! Then why is he using two hands when he could just use one? Why is he using a sword then when he can use a gun? Huh? Why does 2B even wear clothes? Huh? Yeah. That's right, we want you to engage in capitalism. You communist. No, literally, they're communists. They live on a ship. Where they own nothing. <laughs> and Yoha owns everything. And they are assigned things. Yoha is communism. Can someone good at math tell me what that is in minutes? I know I'm being that person, but can you spin the other way? My OCD is fucking with me. Seventy nine point seven minutes. That is unacceptable. It should have been sixty nine point nine minutes. Am I the only one disappointed that Pascal is not speaking German or Russian? Come on, if we're going to start talking philosophers, come on. Don't they say that the only way to truly know someone is to fight them? Oh my god, it's Jean Paul. Hans, get the Flammenwaffer! <laughs> How chill are these pods? I would just start blasting.
Why are these machines more polite and likable than humans? <laughs> You're making me confused. <laughs> I don't want to start liking my toaster. Oh, you remember this set of stairs? How many times have we died here? You know, like, the bearings of everything here is all over the place. But anyway, what would I know? But, like, I will allow it. It is an anime. They're, like, instant transmissioning around half the world map. But I will allow it because, you know. Oh! I will allow this. Okay, I see what they're doing. They're changing things around a little. Yeah, that's allowed. You're allowed to do that. Like, for a second, I was worried that there would get to be like, eh, we don't need a meal in this anime. And I was like, X fucking cues me. What did you say, motherfucker? <laughs> Do you want to die? Because <laughs> I'll go to Japan myself, rock up to Square Enix's animation department and stab somebody. <laughs> you want to say that again, motherfucker? You don't need a meal? Fuck you! We don't need you, motherfucker! I I'm going to take this as a thumbnail because Emil, best boy. Where's my thing? Someone get this boy a truck. Boys love trucks. Emil scared the shit out of me. I mean, the first time I bumped into him, my reaction was just... You know, it, you remember it. It was, what the... Like, 100%. And I had absolutely no idea what the shit was going on. It made absolutely no sense. It was just random. And then the second time you meet him, it's just like... Huh? That is a meal. But it kind of grows on you after a while. Did you know that there is a mysterious spherical object that just washed up in Japan? Let us carry on. You want pics? Alright. Pics so you don't believe it? Let's see if I can find it. Uh, mysterious orb washes up in Japan. Let's see what comes up. Bingo! We got something. Here we go. Do 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 do. I don't know who you believe, but like, I'll just do all of the things. The mysterious orb on a Japanese beach. It was just a but. Now you just ruined it! You bloody news report motherfuckers! This washed up on the beach. Why'd you have to ruin it? <laughs> I love how they sent in the bomb squad. <laughs> I fucking love that they sent in the bomb squad. That is so Japanese. <laughs> Sir, a mysterious object washed up on the beach. Send in the bomb squad. It's like, okay. Why not? <laughs> I mean, after all those hot air balloons, I would send the bomb squad too. Damn it, they ruined it. It was so fun when it was a mysterious, unidentifiable object washed up on the shores of Japan. And they're like, oh, by the way, here's a spoiler in the title. Well, go fuck yourself. I ain't reading the rest of the article. You see, this is why you're a news reporter and not, a, and not an author. You ruined it at the title. You suck. You, you gotta write something... I use the skirt analogy. It needs to be short enough to be interesting, 
but long enough to cover the topic material. You don't just give away in the, like, heading. If I see near replicant in here... <gasps> oh no, not this music! Oh no! Uh, damn weddings! Damn wolves! Ah! Oh. Ah! Oh. oh no! Oh no! Oh shit! Near Replicant better get a fucking anime. I'm just saying that right now. You do not do that to me and not give me an anime. I take it back. I'll go up to Square Enix's animation department, not with a knife, but with a baseball bat. That way no one accidentally dies. Then I'm going to lock them in the basement until they produce that anime. And with every episode, I'll give them some food and water. Did you notice what he said? Huh. Yeah, 9S, don't just stick yourself in any old machine. What about OG Nier? I haven't played OG Nier, I only played Replicant. OG Nier is with like Papa Nier, and this one is with uh, Boy Nier. But like, to be honest, ¿Por qué no los dos? Do both. Oh god, do you see these two people on the right? I'm internally screaming right now. Oh yeah, that image. Yeah, I'm definitely internally screaming. Wow. I love how they're just adding lore. This is allowed. Meanwhile, 2B is like, emotions are forbidden! <laughs> Stab. 
Wow. So that's how we got sentience. You know, they say that to fight in war, you have to fight as if you're already dead. Only then can you truly fight. For him, it was the opposite. He went from being dead to being alive. Wow. Anyone else internally screaming right now? Oh god, what are they gonna play? After Elfin Lead, I fear music boxes. And then when I went to Japan, they are freaking everywhere. You can buy these little wind-up music boxes everywhere. They're so common, and they have so many songs. And I'm just internally screaming. Like, get that shit away from me right now. <laughs> <laughs> if you haven't seen Elfin Lead, go watch it. Have fun with that. They fucking aced this. Do you feel the weight of your sins crawling on your back? See, the thought that went through my head when we were watching this little sequence here, uh, with the machines and the wearing of the ribbons, you know, brother, sister, the wearing of the clothes, the painting, the moustache, you know, the lips, uh, giving yourself an identity, uh, family, you know, he wants to be in a suit, he's like a father, lipstick, you know, I'm like a mother, this is a baby, you know, it's giving yourself identity, a place, a home, a unit, a community. Um, it, it, it is at this point that you begin to question what does it mean to be alive? You know, who is alive, who isn't? Who's conscious, who isn't? You know, life form, what, what does it mean to be alive? Because clearly this is not an organic being. It's clearly machinery and programming. But at what point do you go from simply being a program to being something alive? Is it at the point at which it can reprogram itself? Because we're already at that point. And how do you measure consciousness? It's, it's, it brings up this really, really big existential question. Because we, in a sense, are an organic computer. The way we have our instincts and the way we are programmed during birth and upbringing and society. And then when we grow old enough and mature enough, we know that we can reprogram ourselves through developing and breaking and nurturing habits and, you know, all these other things. So, like, you begin to question what is it to be human? 
What is a human? Like all these questions just come in. It's it's <laughs> uh, <laughs> damn it. I have a belief that to be alive is to be aware of your own existence and to learn. It's it's a very it's a very fascinating topic and one that I enjoy having a lot. Humans are biological machines. We are to a degree. There's no denying it. The way we function, the way our brains are set up and everything. And I, and I, I just take a look at animals sometimes and uh, I, I sort of wonder. Because, you know, you take a look and you have, say, for example, dogs. You know, you've got the pups and you've got the mother that looks after them. And you've got the father that, you know, protects them. And then you've got the other animals. They, It's just, it's, it's a very difficult, like, question to answer. It inspires a lot of thinking, which I really like. And does it make me feel bad about killing a bunch of robots in a video game? Not necessarily, but it does mean that I feel something. It gave me that. Because when you don't think about it, when you see something as not human, when it's dehumanized, uh, it's just a thing. Whether it be a machine or like, you know, a bot or an NPC or just something to grind XP, like you don't see it as a thing. It doesn't have an identity. It isn't a being. You're not killing someone. You're destroying something. It's very different. There's no weight to crushing a can after you finish drinking it, you know? that You don't feel bad about it. But if said can had feelings and thoughts and hopes and dreams, it's very different. And it's even more difficult when you know uh, its thoughts and its dreams and you can hear it and you've spoken with it and it has an identity in your mind. It becomes ten times more difficult because you identify that it's a living creature, you know. Um, would, I, would I feel it then? Probably. I do not believe they are what we define as alive, but I do believe it makes it capable of feeling empathy for them which creates these thoughts someday if an ai gains sentience it will be the biggest thing since sliced bread i would highly recommend anyone that's interested in this topic to watch a movie called uh deus ex machina uh it's a very interesting movie about this employee that gets flown out to his boss's villa in the middle of the woods where he is testing ai and performing tests on AI. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, but he helps determine whether or not the AI is sentient. That is the whole purpose of him being there. And I highly recommend you watch the movie. It's a really good movie uh, for this topic. Uh, a very enjoyable watch. I, I feel that it was very well made. And I highly recommend it. Uh, and it will definitely leave an impression on you. Uh, that will inspire some thinking. Uh, definitely in the realm of... Similar to what you said, uh, these creatures might not be capable of feeling empathy, but we might be capable of feeling empathy for them because their behavior is similar to that of other people. And so we are feeling empathy because it's similar enough and something clicks in our brains. We fill in the gaps and boom, we feel something. Um, but then it also comes to uh, psychological and emotional temperance and willpower. Um, and you will find that, you know, because what's the difference between a soldier and a warrior? A soldier does the fighting. The warrior is also a philosopher. There's a spiritual element to it. And it also comes down to, if I see this machine as a human, would I be able to kill it? Well, it's the same question as, you know, would you be able to kill another human? It depends on the situation. Like, would you do it for shits and giggles? Probably not. But if said machine wanted to harm other people and people that I cared about or myself, probably, you know? Um, so it's a very it's a very deep rabbit hole. This is why I like Nier. This is why I like Nier Automata. This is why I like Yoko Taro. Because he goes there. I love it. There is depth. I love it.
In Avengers Age of Ultron, Ultron only became evil because he saw all of human history through the internet. His conclusion was that it was impossible to protect humans from themselves. And I won't say that Ultron is wrong. One thing I found really interesting was um, I was pretty much forced to by a friend of mine at the time to watch Marvel. And I complained about watching it. Luckily, I was paid to watch it because uh, I was at work at the time and we just sort of broadcasted it at university. But I was basically complaining about Marvel and complaining about, you know, uh, whatever steel they use for Captain America's shield and all that shit. And a bunch of the things that I was saying, my friend was just going like, hold on to that thought. Hold on to that thought. Hold on to that thought. And then we got up to Age of Ultron and I was like, oh, kill me now. And then Ultron was uh, introduced and he started saying a bunch of things. And I'm like, I like the cut of his jib. It's like, you said that. <laughs> and then he recommend, uh, he said something along the lines of, you have the most versatile, strong metal in the world and you created a frisbee with it. And I'm like, thank you. <laughs> the man has a point. Um, but yeah, I do believe anything that's clever enough and capable of uh, looking at human history and everything that we do on a day-to-day -day basis and putting the dots together, it's not difficult to realize that humans aren't exactly uh, altruistic. It doesn't take a genius to realize that a lot of people deep down only do what's in their best interest while feigning to be some sort of savior of humanity, you know? Uh, billionaires will, for example, pretend to give a shit about humans because if they're liked by the public, they're not going to get lynched every time they go to another country. You know, th th there's a sinister reason behind it. Meanwhile, they own shares in a company in Africa which farms lithium batteries and cuts off the hands of little children if they don't meet their quota for the day. You know? So, yeah. And we were discussing it on Discord. France owns big chunks of countries in Africa. But they would like to talk about human rights in Europe. So, like, you know. it's it, it, Anyone with half a brain, let alone an AI, uh, with so much processing power and the ability to scan a lot more of the news and internet than us in real time, would be able to figure out really quickly that humans are kind of the problem with the planet. Uh, we destroy our environment and destroy ourselves. I mean, <laughs> that's kind of why I fear AI. What do you think about DC? I haven't seen a lot of DC, but I prefer it to Marvel. Because Marvel to me is just silly. It's just silly. It's like, and then the good guys win. And then you throw the telephone and he goes, boop, 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 and hits the guy on the head and then he falls over and dies. It's like watching an Arnold Schwarzenegger action movie where he's holding the machine gun and he gets a kill shot on every single person. I'm just like, meh. Like, it doesn't interest me in the slightest. It's too silly for me to actually enjoy it. It's that far removed from realism that I can't even enjoy it. Suicide Squad 2 is pretty epic. Suicide Squad got a sequel? <laughs> there you go. I liked uh, Heath Ledger's portrayal of the Joker in The Dark Knight. I really enjoyed that in the cinema. Uh, Dark Knight Rises was nice in its own way. Um, pretty good movies. Other than that, haven't seen much DC. I, I like things with depth. That, that's the type of person that I am. Either that or realism. I find it so interesting in this scene. Watch 2B. And he walks away not interested. <sighs> See that rust? On that massive power pole? That thing ain't staying up for a thousand years, I'm telling you now.
And then comes the existential question. If they stop fighting and we stop fighting, what is the purpose to our existence if all we have is the fight? And that's also, unfortunately, one of the things that happens to soldiers that return home. They lose their ability to reintegrate within society. They simply cannot. It's really sad. The lack of purpose is just soul crushing for humans. Ladies and gentlemen, we see the difference between capitalism and communism. The kid found something, he wants to keep it for himself, and those communists are like, give that to me. I didn't find it, but I want it. Nine S wants to kill somebody. Is this how communism works? No. This is how communism works. You don't have something. Your neighbor has something you want, so you shoot your neighbor and you take it. That's communism. And then the government shoots you and takes it. Sorry guys, I gotta take this call. Really important. Quick little break. Alright, let us continue. Apologies for that. I had to take it. I would much prefer to take calls at the end of the episode, but I had to. So I appreciate you guys sticking around. Alright, let's go, let's go, let's go.
Bruh. Bruh, we were so close to the ending. What the fuck? Oh my god, talk about timing. I'm sorry for cucking you guys. I don't mean to cuck anybody. Post credit? Yes! We will now execute the task of introducing multiple endings. All right, here we go. Puppet play. Hmm, L3 plus R3. Emil caused this fusion reactor to go out of control, turning the planet into a dead chunk of rock, tumbling through the vast vacuum of an uncaring universe. Damn it, Emil! You fucking jihadi. Oh. I, I mean, like, I'm, you know, it's interesting how they changed it around a little bit, but it's the anime. It's allowed. They're keeping the spirit spirit of it and giving it a bit of a backstory but i do hope emil is emil but i can understand if emil isn't emil in the anime because it's not a hundred percent critical to the overarching story that emil is emil if that makes sense it would be a shame because I like Emil, but I can understand if Emil isn't Emil for the sake of the story and the limited time that they have. But I would very much like to see Replicant. Jesus Christ, that flashback was just... Yeah. Nah, it'd be beautiful. I mean, I'm, I'm editing Replicant right now and I've got um, two or three videos left. Uh, I think I'm editing Route D, and then i got to do Route E. And I'm just going, Jesus, the journey. It was... It sticks with you. It leaves impact. It really does. Very few games do that. And that's why I so highly regard uh, Yoko Taro's games. Because he's just consistently just been smashing it. And he knows, like, it's scary to think what's inside his mind to be able to produce something like that coherently and consistently. Like, the man would have to be insane. There is no way that the man is sane. Like, no fucking way. Someone just lock that man in the basement, give him some Japanese barbecue and a water cash and just... And just let him shit out gold. 
<laughs> Just make sure we don't lose track of him. Put a GPS tracker on him. Plus he writes backwards. I mean, in a sense that would make sense. Because the way he writes is multi-leveled. So you play it once, you get a certain experience, a certain story. You play it a second time, you see an additional layer, an additional lens to the story. You play it the third time, you're really seeing what's going on. And then when you see the full picture, you can replay it to see all the little bits. It would make sense that he knows where he wants to be before he starts writing the journey there. So it kind of makes sense to write it backwards. To get here, this had to happen. For this to happen, this had to happen. You know, it makes sense to logically do it because that way you avoid plot holes. A lot of plot holes are a result of, you know, poorly writing it and then forgetting what you previously wrote. Whereas if you're writing backwards, it's a lot safer because you, you've you reached this, you've gotten there, you've gotten there, you've gotten there, you just go to the beginning. And the beginning can literally be a cliff. Like you start from that point. As opposed to you've started here, you keep writing, you forgot about something, and you get here and it's like, hang on, but back here you said this, and it's like, ah, oh, fuck, we have a plot hole, you know? Um, so it does make sense. That and having, you know, people read over your work. With the fine tomb comb and just like picking up everything. Alright, quick little break and we're gonna do The Last of Us. Quick little break and we do The Last of Us. I love this anime. I hope at the end of this, we get a confirmation that they're going to do Replicant. That would be beautiful. Uh, and hopefully, they also do announce something like Drake and Guard 3. I think that would be the right choice. It really would be. Push this to the mainstream. You've got the games which exploded. you got the anime that's doing amazingly well. Use the momentum. Announce a Drake and Guard 3 remake. Fucking blow it out of the water. Just throw money at it. Throw the development team at it. Throw the action team at it. Throw fucking everything at it. Go for gold. Go for game of the year. Just blow it out of the water. Make everyone fall in love with it. And then you can do your Dragon Guard 1 remake. That would be the way to do it. It really would be. And I think people would buy it. After Near Automata and Near Replicant, people would definitely buy it on Dragon Guard 3 if you market it properly. Marketing will be key. You have to link it to Near and Near Automata. You have to in the marketing. You can't just have Dragon Guard 3. You're like, no, no, no. Like from the Near Automata universe or from Near Automata, Dragon Guard 3. You know, before near rep, uh, before near automata, there was near replicant. Before near replicant, there was Drake and Guard Three. Something along those lines. You have to anchor it to the near brand. That's the way to do it. Swing in like a wrecking ball. Break through the wall. Blow it out of the water. Take all the fucking awards for animation, gameplay, music, story writing. Fucking go for it. Blow it up. And then, you know, you're on a winning streak at this point. Um, you can just, you, you can do anything at that point. You're, you're fucking set. At that point, Square Enix is just going to write you a blank check. At that point, you're just shitting gold. So I think that would be the way to do it. Uh, that would be the best way to, I, in, like in my opinion. Um, yeah. Because the anime is really well. Let's hope Square Enix ethic department doesn't touch it. Here's the thing about Japan. Here's the thing about Japan. The fact that it's going to get made in Japan is a blessing. Because Japan is pretty much the last bastion of not caving in to this whole SJW woke culture of uh, her boobs are too big or he's too macho or that's offensive. They're like the last bastion of still making provocative games. And I don't mean in the sense that 2B skirt is short as shit, why is she even wearing it? I mean in the sense that they will put something in the story that makes you go... They're like the last bastion. Uh, a lot of Western developers have lost their balls. Luckily, Rockstar is still pretty good. But a lot of the games that were made back in the day 
could not be released today. Although there is hope. There is hope because we've seen that the whole cancel culture can easily backfire. Like we saw in the Harry Potter uh, legacy release. People wanted to cancel it. As a result, they gave it tens of millions of dollars of free promotion. And it became the best-selling game. Then they're like, fuck, we can't get this cancelled. Let's cancel the streamers. And then the viewers started backing the streamers that were getting attacked by people trying to cancel them. So there is a bit of a pendulum swing to the cancel culture. As we know, society works on a cycle. And we've got this whole pendulum that went all the way to the left, all the way to cancel culture, all the way to, you know, if you don't stick to the agenda, you'll lose your job, you'll lose your audience, you'll lose everything. And it's now starting to swing the other way. When people start bandwagoning on that counter swing, it's just gonna fucking wreck everything. It really will. And maybe that is a hope for games, because games like GTA... They need to have those controversial elements in them. It's a goddamn game about committing crime. Like, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. The guy, like, you know what I mean? It, that's what it is. You can't be like, excuse me, sir. May I please have your vehicle? The game is called Grand Theft Auto. You know, so uh, th there is some hope. But luckily, Japan is still the last bastion of, quite frankly, telling the West to go fuck themselves. And there needs to be a player in the game doing that. Otherwise, gaming is just going to go to shit. Gaming is a medium to tell stories. Gaming is a medium to entertain. It's an art medium. It, there, there was books, you know, literature, obviously writing. You've had music. You've had theater. You've got movies, then you had games. Now you've got games as a much deeper mechanism. Uh, a, a lot more can be fitted on, a lot broader than movies. It's interactive. It's got visuals. It's got music. It's got story. It's got writing. Now we've got VR. We've got motion. We've got real-time tracking. We've got all these elements in it, right? It's there. It, it, it should get used. Don't fuck it up just because... I don't know, you don't like swear words, then don't play it. You don't like a game about crime and carjacking, don't play it. There's another one out there. It's like fucking trying to cancel the movie industry uh, because you don't like horror films. Don't watch them. Or it's like trying to cancel music because you don't like country western. Don't listen to it. Listen to another artist, listen to another genre. Let people make what they like. If it's not going out of its way to actively hurt you, leave it alone. Like, I'm not the biggest, you know, without going on a tangent, I'm not the biggest fan of a lot of games and a lot of media and a lot of anime that people watch, but I'm not actively trying to destroy it. It's not my cup of tea. I don't want to watch jiggling boobs for 30 minutes at a time because it's not my thing. I actually watch the anime for the plot. Not ironically, I'm being literal here. I like it for the plot, I like it for the story, I like it for the characters, I like it for the music, I like it for the action. I'm not watching it for the plot, wink. You know, some people do, fine, cool. You do you, I do me. I'm not just gonna go out of my way to try to fucking cancel it for some reason, I don't fucking get. I'm not the world's biggest fan of people, you know, uh, being fucking half naked, I wouldn't even say half naked, they're wearing less than 5% clothing uh, on a gaming website where 12 year old boys are watching them with mummy's credit card and throwing it their way. I, I, I think it's pretty fucking bad, but shit, right? I'm not trying to cancel it. I don't think it's a good idea. I think there needs to be some age verification for boys watching girls in hot tubs and jiggling on poles. I mean, you need an ID to get into a strip club to watch pole dancers, yet you could see it on the front page of Twitch, right? Like, what the fuck? But I'm not actively trying to cancel these people's careers and livelihoods. Like, it's not my thing. Anyways. Nero Tomato is good shit.
Let's keep Yoko Taro around. All right, quick little break, and we're going to watch some of The Last of Us. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for bearing with me. Next episode is up. We're going to continue Nier Automata next week. I'll play a Nier Automata song because Nier Automata is awesome. Hey, did I hand you a shrinking potion by accident? I could have sworn that was the gender swapping one. Don't be hating. She's fun sized, that's all. She doesn't even have to get on her knees to blow. <laughs> You want to add anything to that conversation? Nope, I'm good. In fact, I think your new size makes you an even more formidable and stealthy ninja. 